Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And today we are going to be talking to Ronnie McGill, who is the founder of Say the Children um, Movement. Um, SOCM. You can find out more about his organization online, but you're also going to find out more about his organization here with me on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, Mr. Rodney is a entrepreneur. He is a survivor. He is an advocate. He's a community leader. He's a youth mentor. He is so many things in the community. And so I wanted to take advantage of having him on the Speak Up and Inspire series to share about his um, his organizations, about what his efforts are in the community, and just to be able to pick his brain about how he feels about um, what he's doing in the community, the partnerships that he has in the community, and how important it is to bring all of these forces together to make a bigger impact in our community for change. Um, this morning, we had a pretty interesting conversation among a group of advocates that I put into one chat because I have um, two young ladies who are in a domestic violence shelter who have to leave the shelter that the time is up, basically. And um, the reason why they have to leave is because of a new rule in in the shelter that everyone that comes into the shelter has 90 days to basically become self-sufficient and move on past the program or graduate past the program. Um, sometimes 90 days is not enough. Sometimes we need for the victims that are fleeing domestic violence situations to have more time. It's just as simple as that. Um, I've been unemployed before, and sometimes three months is not enough to find a job, to find a home, to get your kids in school, to make sure that you save up enough money so that you can be able to have food on the table and to take care of all of the bills. And so when women go into domestic violence shelters um, and they are given a limited amount of time of just 90 days, sometimes it can be a burden on victims when they are concentrating on healing and they are not, excuse me, and they are not having enough time to be able to get themselves to the point where they are self-sufficient and they are able to move out on their own. So then the problem comes that these women are now going from fleeing domestic violence to being in a shelter which is supposed to be a safe haven and then finding out before they're ready that they have to move and they don't have anywhere to go. So now they are facing homelessness, returning back to a volatile situation that they fled from in the first place, or they are moving into hotels, which are not always safe, especially if you have children, um, or moving in with family, which means that they still are not self-sufficient. So working with victims on a regular basis, I am often tasked with trying to help these women and their children and even men find a place, a safe place, a emergency or emergency housing so that they are able to um, get themselves back on their feet, but not always are they ready. And so when they're given a 90 day window to leave a shelter and they do not have a job yet, or they don't have a car, or um, they don't have the money saved up, Hello, Rodney. We don't have the money saved up to get their own apartments, which that means maybe first and last month's rent. Um, it takes a lot to get back on your feet, especially when you are leaving a domestic violence situation, because a lot of those women have been in financial situations of financial abuse where their abuser was controlling all of their money, did not want them work. They wanted them to stay home. They, because they stayed home for so long or was dealing with abuse for so long, they don't have the skills to go out and get a job, a sustainable job that they can be self-sufficient. So they go into the shelters looking for help and they do get help, but then while they're in the shelters, they do not have enough time and they don't have the resources that they need so that when the shelter says, okay, you have now maxed out your time, now you have to move or you have to leave the shelter, 
where are these women going to go? They've put their children in the schools near the shelter. So now they're having to find housing that is in uh, or convenient for them to be able to get their kids there to those schools, or they're having to move their children from another school to a very new school, which causes emotional trauma for the children. And there's so many things involved when you, when to, women are going into shelters, being told that they have to leave in 90 days and they are not ready and having to face homelessness, going back to abusive relationships, going to family that really doesn't want them there or going into hotels or being homeless. So this morning, I included Rodney in a conversation with several advocates who I work with, um, Iris Benton, um, Clarissa Thompson, Thomas, um, Andrea Merriman, Valerie Simon, um, various other advocates that um, I try to bounce off of when I have these situations where we need to find these women housing. And all of us were running into dead ends for the simple fact that the shelters are full the shelters are overcrowded. The shelters or other shelters have wait lists. Um, the hotels nearby are too expensive for the women to, to be able to go to. And if there are shelters available, they are in another county and possibly another state. So not only have these women been traumatized in abusive relationships, then they go to a shelter. Then that shelter tells them that they have to get out. They have to be moved to possibly another county or another city or another state. And then they're traumatized all over again because now they're having to start over in a whole new environment without their support and the resources that they need because they don't know anybody there. So now they have to start all over. And just imagine what the kids are going through. They're going from an abusive home to a domestic violence shelter, which is basically a homeless shelter, getting services there, having to spill out all of their business, possibly taken away from their friends, their family, their school. Now they're being kicked out by the shelters and being told that you can't stay here anymore because your time is maxed out. Now they're homeless. They have nowhere to go. And that's the problem that we as advocates have is trying to find these women emergency housing in a short period of time and they have children. So if we do find a shelter that has a bed, they might not have beds for the children. So now they're being rejected from the shelters that might have a bed or two because now they have to accommodate a woman and her children. If she has more than one or two children, they don't have room for her. So now she's still homeless, okay? refer her to a homeless shelter, she has to go there every evening to try to get her kids a bed every single night. That's not healthy. That's not a good environment. And a lot of these shelters are dangerous. They're not good places for women to be with their children. So then we call other resources. We call other transitional homes. We call other homeless shelters. We call other domestic violence shelters. And they're all full. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do with these women who do not have their resources ready and available to be able to be on their own? The shelter has told them, domestic violence shelter has told you, you have 90 days or 180 days or whatever the time is and you have to get out. Some of these women who really need extensions don't get them. And then we're faced with calling Butterfly Visions Project, my um my organization, calling Diva Nation, calling Andrea Merriman, calling Katrina Thomas, calling uh, Roddy McGill, calling Brandon Chuck Brown, calling Judith Brown, calling all of these people, and we're all trying to find them a place to go. So today, I made six phone calls trying to find two women with four kids shelter. And as of today, I still have not found them a place to go where they can stay for a amount of time with their children. We can put them in a hotel for a couple of days, but that's not feasible. I can't afford to put them in a hotel for a couple of months until they figure it out. They're working two jobs trying to sustain. They can't spend money on hotels because that's expensive for extended stay. 
So this is a big problem. It's a big problem in our community. It's a big problem in the domestic violence community. And Rodney was included in this conversation earlier, and he said something that was very important and that we all know that we all have to come together to help our community. If we all have resources, if I have five resources, Rodney has five resources, Brandon has five resources, Clarissa has five resources, Anne has five resources. All of these people have five resources each. Each We put them all together, now we have 100 resources. Do you think that we'll be able to find these women housing somewhere, some way? I think so. Are we able to get these women away from their violent encounters and their children away from these violent encounters with 100 resources versus five? Yes, we are. Are we able to band together and come up with some money to at least get them in a hotel for a couple of nights while we are making all of these phone calls? Yes, we can. When it's 100 resources versus my five or your five or someone else's five, if we all come together and unite, we will be able to make such a bigger impact. And that's what we're going to talk about today with Mr. Rodney. So we are going to go ahead and invite um, Rodney to join us. We are going to do that right now. And when he joins us, we are going to talk to him. Very candid conversation. He already warned me that he's, he's a straight shooter. He's going to tell it like it is. He's going to say what's on his mind. So we're all adults here. This is a very, very big problem in our community. Um, it's one that I'm hoping to help combat myself here in the next year or two. But meanwhile, I'm using my own resources, my own money. When there are women that are looking for safe places, I will put them in a hotel for a day or two, but not always can I do that. Not always can our advocates do that. And not always are shelters available for after that day or two when my money runs out or your money runs out, that they have a place to stay. We had a young lady living in her car last week. I put it out there for help after just asking for help getting a young woman that's homeless, some clothes for her kids. People came together and they helped, they helped. We were able to get all of her kids something to wear for school. But then the next day, I had a girl with a daughter living in her car and nobody could help. Not all the time do we have the financial resources to be able to help. And unfortunately, she was living in a car and she had to go all the way to Virginia to a family's house to go to court to be able to get her daughter somewhere because she didn't want her daughter living in a car anymore. These kind of things should not be happening. If I put my resources together, you put your resources together, we can make a bigger impact. We can all make a bigger impact if we put all of our resources together. So. We are waiting to bring Mr. Rodney on. Um, as soon as he joins us, we are going to talk about it. And I want you to chime in. If you have something to say, say it. Let's get it out in the open. Um, on September 29th, I am having an advocate and community leader um, networking mixer um, at uh, Queen's Coffee House. I hope that all of you will take the time to come. The whole purpose of the network meeting is for us to come together as advocates, community leaders, business owners, just residents of our communities to come together and come up with a plethora of resources so that we will have pages and pages and pages of resources in one place. And so I'm wanting everyone to come together on September 29th so that we can all talk about what are the big issues in our community right now. And one of the big issues is domestic violence victims who are going into the domestic violence shelters who are given a 90 days, three, four, five month time limit that they have to get out and then they're homeless and they have nowhere to go and they're sleeping in their cars and they're just jumping from house to house with their kids which is not healthy, which is re-traumatizing. And sometimes women will go back to their abusers just so they can have a place to lay their head and for their kids to have shelter over their heads. That is not okay. We have to do something about it. It's a big problem here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have to do something about it and we have to do so immediately. Um, if you know um, of any resources, definitely, excuse me, definitely 
tag them. If you have resources for women that are homeless, not just DV victims, but that women that are homeless, if you know transitional homes, if you know shelters, if you know organizations, um, if you know people that have homes that they're renting, rooms that they're renting, anything to keep these women and men and their children off the streets, not being homeless, not having to continue going bed to bed, let me know. Tag your resources and let me know. I would love to hear it and I will write them down and I will make sure that I that I share that I share them. Um, I see Sonia. She has a transitional home. Um, she was willing to help us today. Um, unfortunately, um, because of the situation, we had to try something else. But Sonia was willing to help us today. Um, she has a two year looks like two year maximum or minimum maximum, I'm going to say, for the women that come into your home. And that's perfect time. If you've ever been unemployed, if you've ever been without a home, if you've ever been in a situation where you have hit rock bottom, sometimes you cannot get yourself together in 90 days. It's impossible. You cannot get yourself together in 90 days and move out with your children Sometimes it's impossible. And these women are being forced to go back to abusive relationships or, or another homeless shelter or hotels that aren't safe or living in their cars or going to family who really don't want them there or who do want them there and take advantage of them. There's so many horror stories that happen because the resources are not there to be able to help these women get the shelter and get the housing that they need before they are put out. It, is, it, it has to be done and it has to be done today. So we are going to be talking about it. Um, still waiting for Ronnie to come on. Not quite sure where he is, um, but waiting for Ronnie to come on because this is something um, that we need to talk about. And if you have any resources, please share them. Please share them. Um, I encourage you to tag places, um, to tag some places that you know about on um, on this thread, you can reach out to me um, and send me whatever resources that you know of. If you know people that are renting, excuse me, can you give me my charge? There's, if you know anybody that's renting a room, if you know anyone who has a home um, that is renting out rooms, renting a whole home, somebody that will give somebody second chances. The two women that I have, they both have two jobs each and they both have four kids each. And as of the 27th and the 30th, neither one of them is going to have a home. Neither one of them is going to have anywhere to go. And they're trying to support each other. Um, they're trying to support each other so that they can help each other. Um, if they can find a place together, that would be perfect. But we don't want these women to continue relying on other people. We want them to be self-sufficient. We want them to be able to get their own homes. We want them to be able to tell their children that they have somewhere to stay every night versus hopping from shelter to shelter or from family to family or couch to couch. We don't want that. We don't want these, these women and these children, these men that are um, victims living in their cars. We don't want that either. Something has to be done and something has to be done soon. Um, if I was a millionaire, if I even had $10,000, even if I had $1,000, if I had it and somebody needed it, I would do it. If we all come together, if we all do our due diligence, if we all work together and stop worrying about who's getting this award and who's doing this and who's going on this TV show and who's getting all these awards and certificates and so forth and so on. If we stop worrying about being recognized and we worry about who it is that we are trying to help and our purpose as advocates then we will accomplish so much more if we work together. So if you know of any shelters, if you know of um, uh, any resources, if you know of any organizations who helps um, women and men, um, especially ones with children, get themselves back on their feet. If you know of anyone who owns homes that is renting out rooms, um, if you know of anyone who has money that they just like to throw around and can pay for three or four weeks of hotel stays, if you know anyone who has the resources to be able to provide for these women and their children, for these men and their children, for these families, 
and their children, but even single people. There's no reason why me, as a single woman, should go to a domestic violence fleeing my abuser, and then I have to be told from the domestic violence shelter that I can't stay there any longer, even though you're supposed to be helping me, and now you're just throwing me out into the wolves. It's not right. It's not right. Um, it, it totally goes against everything that domestic violence services should be doing. We need to be helping these women become self-sufficient. And if you see that these women are trying, then extend their stays. Find more resources for them. Don't just tell them that they have to leave because your time is up. You have to help these women. They came to you for help. They come to me for help. I can only do for so much. So I'm asking you, if you have an extra $10, if you have an extra $20, if you have a room in your house for rent, if you know someone that owns a home, if you have partnerships with hotels in your community, if you know organizations that help people with transitional housing, if you know, um, if you know people that um, just have money just laying around and they're looking for something to do with their money, then talk to them. Tell them to reach out to me. Tell me tell me that they're available and I will make sure that every advocate and every community leader and every person out there in the community that I know is looking for something to do or some or is looking to help someone or um is just trying to uh help others in their community, even if it's your neighbor Tell me, I will make sure that all of my advocates, all of my sister friends, all of my queens, all of my kings, that everyone out here that I know is trying to help people, that they will get exactly what they need or this information. I will make sure that they get the information. Me personally will make sure that they get this information because we need this information. The shelters are full. The homeless shelters are full. The domestic violence shelters are full. The, the organizations have wait lists. We are going to have to reach into our communities, to our churches, to our hotels, to our millionaires, to our billionaires, to our well-off people. We need to reach out to people who have names, who have something that they can do, or even someone who's just passionate about helping their neighbors. We have got to come together and unite to be able to make change. We've got to talk to our councilmen. We have to talk to uh, the, the, the Congress. We have to do what we have to do and within our means. I can't always take off to go down to the courthouse. I can't always go to council meetings. I can't always go to all these DV meetings. I cannot do it. But I know that my sister friend will. I know that the other advocates are. I will put in my two cents. I will say what I have to say. I will make emails. I will make phone calls. I will do what I have to do. All I'm doing is asking for you to do what you can do. This is a sincere, what can you do to help our community? What can we all do to help our community? Thank you, Tay. Please get me that information. Rodney, I have invited you, so just waiting for you to come on. Um, Tay, if you have some information, if you know someone that has a room, I have uh, two women, they have kids, they are looking for a room. They are looking for a home. They are looking for an apartment. They are looking for someone to help them with a hotel or something because in the next uh, week, they are going to be homeless. They have nowhere to go. Um, and this is, I get this every single week. And I know that um, people that are watching, like Miss Sonia and uh, Katrina and Clarissa and Andrea and Irish, we all get these phone calls on a daily basis of victims and we get on a daily basis and a weekly basis domestic violence victims and other situations who are homeless because they do not have anywhere to go the resources are tapped out so guess what that means that we have to do something as their neighbor as their church leader as their uh, parent in the child, their kid's school, we all have to come together. We have to make a difference. We have to do it because I'm so I'm so tired of telling these women, I don't know what to do and where to put you. 
I can't invite everyone to my house, but trust me, if I could, I would. I just don't have the room, but somebody does. Someone has a room, someone has a basement, someone has an extra $60, somebody has a church, somebody has a business, somebody has something, and we have to pull together. When I put out things out there saying that this woman needs that, or this man needs that, or this woman with her children needs that, it's no play. It's not fake. These are things that happen all the time, and I so appreciate every single person who donates when I put those things out there, but not all the time can people donate because guess how often I have I do it when I'm tapped out or resources are full. We have to do it. It's, it's, it's a must. It's a must. We have to do it. Um, okay, let me see. Let's see if we can get Rodney on here now. I got amped up there for a second. He's coming. I think he's coming. Let's hope he's coming. So we're trying to bring um, Roddy McGill on right now. Um, he is the founder of Save the Children Movement, which is something that I'm very passionate about, is helping children um, in the community uh, achieve wellness, um, achieve life skills, social skills, um, to be sure to be great adults. There he is. Hi, there you go. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Rodney? I feel like I left you out in the water. <laughs> oh, I got a lot to talk about. I was I was I'm pretty angry today because I can't I, I can't find these women a place to stay. <laughs> I'm taking it personal right now. So um thank you for joining us. Um I really appreciate you making that point this earlier when we were on the um the chat with the other advocates and the other community leaders um putting our heads together to try to find um these particular women a place but not just these women there's so many women and there's so many men and children that need places to stay and there's resources out there that we can't take advantage of because they're full they're waitlisted or they're just they're just tapped out so I appreciate you bringing that up that we need to come together. There's too many of us and a lot of us watching right now who have businesses, who have, um, you know, maybe extra money laying around um, or no resources or, or no people that if we all just put them together in one bucket, we'll have so many different options and so many opportunities to help people even more if we just come together. So I wanted you to talk. I've talked a lot. <laughs> No, uh, we're going to talk together. Yes, we are. So tell me, tell me what your organizations are and what do your organizations do? Uh, I really don't like talking about our organization because it's really not a marketing type thing okay. and names throw people off. So what I'd rather say is that we're all in the same organization. We are the community's relationship. Okay. We got to be better about speaking for our community. Right. If we as leaders, if we as peers out here, if we are not able to work together, to come together, to come meet together, to sit down and put down strategic plans, how can we expect the community and others to do it? I mean, it's a circle we're going on out here. Ain't you tired of hearing the exact same things every time? Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't we know five years ago, 10 years ago that we need to come together? Yeah, we did. Okay. So it come down to when it's a come to, we need to have some come together parties then where everybody just come together, sign up for coming together. Organization name don't even matter because when we can get somebody some help, it really don't matter who the name was. We got them some help. I told so you. I asked the question earlier today, do we love our own success more than we like the cause? Oh my goodness. Say that again. Say it one more time. Do we, do we like our own success more than we like to call. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Yes. Yes. A lot, a lot of people um, get, get caught up in the, the recognition, being on TV, so forth and so on, and the numbers versus the service and the resource and the community. Yes, sir. I agree. And so it's about self-accountability. When we look at it, we got everybody can tell you about 
people doing bad. They can start with themselves a lot of times. That's just what we're doing out here. We're not out here helping our community for free. We out here paying to help our community. Yet when we put those pays together and we do things together, it's really pennies on the dollar. Like when they put a, a penny extra on the tax, a million people spending those pennies every day. We can help a lot of people. We got to put our pennies. We got to put our nickels at a Walmart, a Harris Teeter. This is for us. And let it stack up and let us use it in a way that people want to contribute more to it. We talk about nickels and dimes. Everywhere you at, this is what we're doing. Only way it works, though, if it's a whole lot of us doing it everywhere with accountability for the money we have, which is really easy to do when you have people there who's making sure everything's accounted for and we showing the work that we're doing with it. Right. I mean, we do something like that. We can probably help thousands of people all over the county just off nickels and dimes. So I'm about solutions, you know, uh, participating in bigger things because no matter how many people I help, you help, or the next person help, it's thousands more. So we got to have bigger plans and quick. We got to actually do things. I don't even like meetings. I like actions. Right, right. Um, right I have right. someone um, who said, uh, Miss Teresa Johnson. She said that her name is Teresa Johnson. I like to meet you. I have organization called to serve love. I'm a nonprofit, 501c3. We're getting ready to open up a home for domestic violence and homeless. She gave me her phone number as well as her website, and she's looking forward to talking to you. I'm assuming she's talking to us. So, Ms. Teresa Johnson, thank you so much. We need more services like yours. Um, I have actually reached out to two of my um, mentors and two advocates. One of them is watching about how can I do that myself? How can I open up a transitional home? How can I open up something where I can help? Because the need is there. And, but we have to share resources. We have to share knowledge. We have to share what we know so that you know, we can pass it on and make a bigger impact. What I wanted to say, you know, one way is self-sustainability. You know, all of us doing group economics type things. Um, that's, that's one way that we serve the community. You also have people that are of means, I mean, of um, have much financial means. They're not really using the group economics. They support certain things. So between those two, people that have the economic means and our group economics being self-sustainable, and we have what I think is the most important one, which is the political end. Um, if you look right now, a lot of people don't know. I okay, so okay. I can't so hear you now for some reason. I, I don't know what happened. It, it looked. Can you hear me? It looked in for me. Yes, I'm sure it's me. Okay. This is the second time this has happened to me. So give me one more second. Continue talking. Continue sharing while I'm trying to figure out my volume. Uh, uh, we can hear you. I can't hear you. We hear you. <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. We'll uh, hear you. <laughs> um, Cedric. Well, Tiffany you was saying a lot earlier. The last time I had um, to put something Tiffany was talking in about the, the, phone the, the um, the, really, um, it's almost traumatizing to for people to, hear, to come to you with so many problems and so many issues, and you got a heart for it, and you really can't do anything about it. Yeah. So I was feeling what yeah. Tiffany coming from, and I, I really hear that from a lot silly of people. Headphones, but hold on. Can I hear you now? Can I hear you now? Can you? Yes, I can hear you now. Let me see if yes. I take it out like yeah. I did last time. Hold on. It's a burner. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the last thing she said. I don't expect you to repeat the whole thing, but um, where were we? Because I didn't hear anything you said. I was telling everybody while you was gone that I feel where you and others are coming from. And it's really almost traumatizing when week after week, month after month, year after year, so many different burdens are coming to you. And when you had a heart for you, over time, it can affect you. It can. So I'm, I'm always telling people, you got to find a way to have fun doing this because if it's in you, you're probably going to always do it. Right. So you got to look at the right. different ways. And I was telling the people earlier, you have the big donors, corporations and things. You have the self-sustainability where we, when we come together, we 
have access to all three of those, which means the community has access to all three of those. Mm -hmm. If you go to somewhere where you need a $25 million five-year program and you buy yourself or your organization like you, they love love you better if you got 50 other organizations suited and booted standing with you showing that y'all going to work together. And that's what it's about, putting ourselves in position, putting our pride and ego to the side, and putting ourselves in position where we're not helping these little small segments of people. Right. This is about changing statistics. Um, this is about um, once we've been somewhere for a certain amount of time, we can show people some metrics that this is what we got to accomplish. And since we're on this video, I want everybody who hear this video ever to know right now that the city of Charlotte is starting their micro grant process. Um, and you have to have a letter of intent in by September 27th. Mm -hmm. That money went from 30000 to 100000 to 500000 mm -hmm. Now, um, there's no telling what it's going to be next year. So what is going on is people are going to be, a lot of them are going to be banned procedurally because they didn't make that first step mm -hmm. of getting that letter in. And this money is meant for our communities. Right. Now, the county at the same time, what a lot of people don't know about, they have 10 grants one year and 12 grants the other year to start at six figures. See, people of us, we had information from each other. We give each other a little bit of access, not realizing that that's going to wear us out. Because if you're out here to help somebody and you deny information to somebody that's helping somebody, that's a hypocrite. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly backwards buddy, to me. This withholding information, access to get resources to help the people. Those people is what we got to eradicate from our circles and our community because they are the ones who keep the status quo going. Yes. Those who feel like as long as they can have a cape on, mm -hmm. as long as they can help out they certain people, mm -hmm. that they doing their job. No, the problem bigger than me. Yeah. It's bigger than them. It's bigger than you. We got to share information readily. This is like a war. You cannot hold back information in a war to the people you fighting with and for. Amen. And that's what I'm about. Just saying what I think needs to be said after looking at what's going on in the circles that go on in mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, do you want to be in a relationship with the community or anybody else where all you're doing is going in circles? <laughs> the same exact problems year after year. Yep. Here come a disease, here come a police murder, here come a black crime, here go somebody hating on me, here go every... ...the type of mentalities where we can see two, three different sides of things, we can't sit down at a table at Bojangles Coliseum, call all us together, and with, with a nickels each, we can help entire cities. We just keep going in circles and going away from the simplest things. That's true. I totally, I totally agree with you. I, I preach a lot about um, people, people not being so focused on themselves and what they are doing in the community, but more focused on their purpose and the mission in the community. Um, I, I say that a lot without trying to offend people, but. I've spent my last before making sure that somebody had a room or something like that. I know various other people who have done the same and they don't want anything in return. Um, I really think that people who are doing this, some people are doing it for the wrong reasons. But then there are people who are doing this work for the right reasons, who are passionate, they have a purpose, they have a mission. This is what they do. It is in their hearts and it is in their soul to help other people. And just like you're saying that we need to come together, show up for each other, share the resources, you know, reach out to one another and not to be scared to reach out for one another. But if you know that there are people in need and you have the information don't withhold that information. You cannot withhold that information because we have people sleeping in their cars, people sleeping in the tents on the side of the street. You go down North Tryon and you have homeless people with tents sleeping on the side of the street. You have people that are being let go out of shelters, dragging their kids around the city all day until 
four o'clock, three o'clock in the evening to try to get another bed with these kids. There are so many resources out here and we have to be able to tap into them. And a lot of times the resources is right next door, but people are not giving it up. We have to, we have to share. We have to share because if we don't share, we're not going to make any improvements, maybe small, minute movements, but we can make so much more. <laughs> we can make a mile, a country, uh, the, the, we can do so many things if we work together. So many things. For you. So what do, so this right here is an example of working together. <clears throat> we don't have to say right now that we need to work together because right now we're all working together by communicating. Mm -hmm. We just have to recognize where we're at in the communication, where we're at in the relationship so we can know what step to make. Um, right now we're having a conversation about coming together. So the next step we need to do is set a time where we can come together. Mm -hmm. um, it could be on your show. We can have a forum. We can have a Zoom and we need to have an agenda when we come on there to do something simple, just some action. Because from that little itty bitty action that we did together, we get to meet each other, we get to really know each other, we get to feel each other's energy, and that energy alone is gonna bring the ideal that we need. We just gotta make that step. Yes, sir. I mean, you gotta jump in the water. That's true. Of unity. That's true. Um, on September 29th, I am doing an advocate, community leader, networking mixer. Um, I sit out there. I've invited probably 300 people. We will see how many show up. Um, not every, not everybody can attend everything. I can't always attend everything, but if you can, I hope that you will. Okay. Um, if people invite you to get together, to put resources together, try to do it. If you can't, at least find out what can you do if you cannot be available. So that way you're still connected, you're still networking, and you're, you're still showing that you are there for the purpose and for the mission. Um, with you, um, you have a story, and I yeah. want to know if you will share that story with us because you have a very good Is it important? I mean, I'm going to tell you something that Korean Max said one time that I really <laughs> – you know, I, I really thought men a lot. Yes. Korean Max said in the interview, I was reading it. She said, you know what? Every time we get somebody with a little charisma and they start making a little bit of happen, they make it all about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard her say that some years back. It just ain't. I mean, my story, the people that know me, millions of people, or hundreds of people, or tens of people know that I was from May the 5th of 1999 until June the 25th of 2012, I was in federal prison. Um, I was involved in some um, activities. Um, I went to trial against the feds. I ended up doing that 13 years, one month and 19 days. And from the time I went in, I was motivated to be better than I was before I went in. I was about to turn 33 years old. I wasn't a youngster. I'd already been around the world, uh, already had found a wife, all those type of things in life. Um, I'd never been in the drug game. It was all balanced. Um, they took me down the road because it was 24 robberies, all white organizations, which caused me a whole lot to this day of um, certain type of strife. However, that's what it is. That's what it is. I've been made my peace with everything that's happened before. If anything, um, I've got hundreds of brothers who I build with to this day that's out here on the street fighting recidivism, working, I'm having businesses, being positive. So we all here now. There's a lot of people that left this earth. We here. We got an opportunity to do what they can't do. Right. No matter what happened the day before this. Right. Right. You know, I came out of I came out of that and I went and got my bachelor's degree in government. I'd already been studying from the day one the law once I went in. So the government and the law, um, I came out in twenty fourteen while I'm in before I graduated from Belmont Abbey with my bachelor's degree in government. Um, and started the Save Our Children movement in 2014, two years before I graduated from there. And then um, last year, we got our own own, own office um, with several people who are here with us, like Sandra Chisholm and Judith and them. And we got an office over off Executive Center Drive where I started the LLC mm -hmm. um, called Community Unity Center 100 LLC, CUC 100. And all we do is just look to encourage, to build, to support where we can, to just keep the focus on unity and keep the bullets off us and point them the way they're supposed to be to those who, you know, if, if people are more upset with family members, friends, and people around here, then 
um, people who run in this system that we're in, you know, that's a mental problem. That's right. You know, <laughs> we mad. We even if we gonna be mad. We mad at the wrong people. You know, <laughs> we have to really recognize what it is. Right. Um, I I wanted to ask you about your story, and I I do that with everybody that comes on because I really believe that what we do um, in the community and for others comes from a a personal place. Everything that we do. Um, some people have a story, some people have a good story, some people have a bad story, some people have a, you know, whatever they want to call it, but we all have something that has made us who we are today, and that is the reason why we do what we do. Um, so I think it's really important for us to recognize where we come from, um, and for me to slew you for doing what you needed to do to get where you needed to be. Um, for getting your bachelor's um, in government, which is so spectacular to, to be able to major in. Um, me, I'm not a political person, but when things come up that I feel need to, you need to take a stand, a stand on, I do my research and I take a stand. Um, I also think that you came out and you have made some very important contributions to our community. And so I want to thank you for doing that. And she There's a team. Definitely. What do you have going on? Only other team. <laughs> what do you have going on? Tell us. What do you have coming up? Um, what can we do to help? How can we support? Well, I think it, it really, like I said, ain't too important what I personally got going on. I think we need to remember that these couple months right here, it's going to be decent weather. It's not going to be that much trouble. And we're going to see a lot this winter because every time it gets cold, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of activity, yet the activity start up too late. So we do have some winter coat drives and some coat drives that's already um, that we have annually, um, the holiday events. We feel like if we have something to do for the community throughout the days, there's always something that you can take a burden off a family that day. If you can give a family a meal for that day and something to take home, that might have saved them twenty, thirty dollars somewhere to do something else. Um, we always um, during the holidays we come up with gifts. For, I mean, people is always feeding into us, sowing into us because they see that we actually give things away. I mean, we literally ride through neighborhoods with with trucks and jeeps with coats filled on them. Um, so people on here probably seen some of that. We just mm -hmm. whatever resources we can get, you know, we um noted. We ain't doing it to even get a blessing back. We just know that it's able to do. We have a lot of skills. Right. And with 501 C3s especially, mm -hmm. um, if we really, really to do the work, some well-placed letters, and you know, a lot of people don't know, yet I'll say it right here. I don't think you know either, Tiffany. But Wells Fargo sent us a letter a month ago in the CUS program, Community Urban Stabilization Program, and made us one of the um, contestants to get a property in Gastonia, where I grew up at. Okay. Um, and they awarded us that property now. Okay. And we thought we'd be getting it at the end of October. We're going to be getting it at the end of September. We've already been there, looked at it, taken the pictures, already got developers and renovators. So we're going to have a little transitional part to it, uh, um, all the community services. You know, that's my hometown, you know, Gastonia and Clover. And I know a lot of people here in Charlotte since being in and out of here since the mid-80s. So okay. I like how everything's coming together. So... I just want everybody to know this winter, just come together with whoever, right. you know, just whoever, just work with somebody and then, you know, turn that collaboration into a convergence with some other people. Right. It's like that water, it's too old. The more, the bigger it gets, you can be an iceberg. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. The more, and it ain't about how many at your event, it's the quality of people be there. Because mm -hmm. one person be there can have 10,000 people with That's them, true. for all you know. That's true. And 10,000 people can be there and 9,000 of them ain't about doing nothing. <laughs> so it's the, really the quality of people That's that you're looking for. That's true. It's easy to say let's work together. Right. Actually working together is two different things. That's true. I mean, have a, a, have a unity resume. You know, that's what we got to build. Right. We got to show these children and young people, this is how you do it. You've been hearing it. Your whole life, our parents' life, we have to come together. We we can't just keep saying the same thing and think our children ain't gonna think we crazy. <laughs> Cause they say you smoking cigarettes, why shouldn't I smoke them? You're not coming together with your peers, so why should we come together? Right. I agree. I agree. Definitely. I definitely agree with that. So 
Am I challenging you and everybody? Am I am I challenging people? I think so. I think you're challenging people. You're challenging me. So I know you're challenging me. You're challenging others. (laughs) But it's a good challenge. It's a good challenge. Because I have to live. Yeah, we have to challenge ourselves. We have to challenge others. We do. We have to do that. Um I'm I'm not perfect in any way, shape, or form, but I know I have a good heart. I know None you have a good heart. Good heart. I know everybody I'm looking at here on, that's watching right here has a good heart. Um, they're listening for a reason. I ask people to listen specifically because I said to everyone, business owners, neighbors, community leaders, advocates, listen in because we have to unite. We have to. It's 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 not a joke out here. There's too many people out here that need help, and we have the resources to help them. I can't do it myself. You can't do it by yourself. We have to do it together. Um, so what, what's on the horizon for you? I know you have this, this home in Gastonia. Any, anything else you want to share mm-hmm. with us? Well, you know, it'd be so much. If, it ain't, if, it ain't, if the conversation not about us coming together, like you invited a lot of people at your event. I'm not a person who you're going to see me ever ask for a donation, mm-hmm. ever ask to send me anything. I'm not My conversations with people is not about what I'm doing. It's about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I love my team. I love how my team moves. I want everybody to have a team. I want the team to come together. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about what you're doing and what is the theme of that, because that sounds like what I'm about and those I know about. September 29th. Yes. If what time of day, where at, all, all that. Okay. If you had that information. <laughs> so it's going to be at Queen's Coffee Bar. It's uh, Sunday the 20th, oh, so yeah, the 29th. I believe it's at 2, but I'll double check. Um, and basically I've... On a Sunday? I'm sorry? On a Sunday? It's a Sunday, yes. It's in the afternoon. No, and all these people watch football. I'm they got so, to really be about to come out there. Weird. They got to really be about to come out there. Um, the yes. young, the woman that owns um the place, she is giving it to us. Um, we know she's not charging us or anything, so we're getting in where we can fit in. Um, it. it's a great place. It's be- nice food, nice and quaint, and it's a good place for us to be able to get together and actually have an open conversation without any interruptions. Um, so community leaders, activists neighbors church whoever come on we need to talk we need to put our heads together we need to share resources we need to talk about what do you know oh no really oh yeah i know about this just like what you just said i had no i had no idea about that i did know about the micro grant because we were awarded one um the first round that they did last year we did get an award for that we were too yeah so um yeah but i didn't know about you know you getting the home in Gastonia. <laughs> I didn't know well, nobody nobody knows about it except our close team because we haven't made it public. Oh. However, it's one of those things where I got opportunity now to show how we work together. Right. Because everything about that property, we consider it to be all of ours, including yours. Right. If you can provide something useful for the community, it's right there. Right. Um, we want to get people right. in there. Um, get them in for a couple of months, mm-hmm. get them out. Right. Um, our plan is with this program um, to get everybody who has 501c3 into this program. Okay. Um, these properties are nothing that's given to us. We we all earn these because in 2005, 6, 7, when our people were getting all them subprime loans and losing their houses so rapidly, that's all a lot of these houses are that Wells Fargo giving out. Call it just like it is. Yeah. Um, we don't we don't throw rocks and hide our hands. We call it just like it is. We talk to the power to be just like we're talking right now. Um, if the truth don't stop, it's nothing weird is what my mentor told me. I'm sorry. My kids is running around. I can't hear. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. We just got to throw away these imaginary geographical lines in between these cities because it's almost like it's a trance on the public where we like saying we got to go to this place. Right. All of this is the same place. Mm-hmm. Some spins, the earth spin in a little time. That's all it is to get there. Right. Charlotte, Gastonia, South Carolina, North Carolina. We have so much power when we start coming together then bring Virginia. That's why we deal with the people in the different states because we have got to connect ourselves all around the planet, all around the country, all around every county, every state. We got to know how it's going there, how they're holding us back, 
what's holding us back, and we got to put these systems everywhere we go. That's what Nipsey, a lot of people don't know that Nipsey hustled. Mm -hmm. the, the real part about him dying was he had a program called Too Big to Fail. Mm -hmm. A lot of people never heard of that. Right. That program was under the concept of what happened during the economic recession in the 2000s, early in the 2000s, where the United States government <laughs> gave banks and corporations trillions, billions, and millions of dollars because they determined that if they failed, America would fail. America's economic system would fail. So Flip's idea was our communities are too big to fail. So we got to make sure that we um, give our communities stimulus packages. Okay. And any time that we paying taxes out of every dollar, it add up. When you look at your checks, if you work in things, all that money getting chopped up, taken from us, and being given to other people to build their families, to build their communities, we can't allow those things to happen. We got to get with those who know how to do that, who know how to express that in a um, articulate way to the people that need to hear it in a forum that makes them do something, that makes them that's challenging them, that causes them, you either going to do this or you're going to do that. You're not just going to hear this like it's a plea right. because we're going to solve our problems anyway. As we go, though, we're going to call it out and make sure that those who are receiving our taxpayer money, who are getting our funds every day, we're going to make sure that all the people that we can can know exactly who they are in the non-election year. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like it. I like it. Good information. Good information. Um, Rodney, yesterday, was it yesterday? What's today? Monday? Saturday, we both attended the Gracious Hands fundraiser. It was a... Shout out Gracious Hands. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Always a beautiful thing. That's my little sister, Sandra Chisholm. <laughs> it was yeah. a beautiful uh -huh. experience. Um, I didn't go to the one the previous year, but this one, I have to say, knowing that I was in the midst of people who share m my same vision and my same passion was probably the highlight of my year so far. Um, Sonia is amazing. Um, she's humble. Yes, she is. Um, she's a great yes, she woman. Um, and we just had a really, really wholesome good time. <laughs> yeah, um, that, was, that was beautiful every time. It was. Just a lot of smiling. You know, a lot of people, a lot of positive energy be up in them spots when we come together mm -hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of positive. It was. It was. And it was so nice to see, um, you know, everybody supporting each other, everybody saying hi and hugging each other. There wasn't no drama. You didn't have people looking up at each other up and down. Everybody was there for a reason. And they came to yeah. support and they came to support each other. Um, and like Sonia said, it, it wasn't just about her. It wasn't just about you. It wasn't just about me. It was about all of us together and what it is that we're doing. Um, and I just have to say that I don't think I'm going to miss another one unless I'm in the bed or can't get out the bed because it was truly, it was an amazing evening for me. Very simple, very classy, um, but very uplifting, classy. uplifting and very inspirational. So just wanted to put that shout out in there for Miss Sonia um, because I saw you there and that was the reason why I brought you on tonight because I've been wanting to talk to you for a while, but haven't really had the opportunity. So this is the opportunity for us to get to know each other and for me to, you know, uh, have a platform for you to talk about, you know, what's going on in the community, not just about you, because you don't want it to be about you, but to, to educate us, to tell us, you know, what's going on. And I definitely heard some things this evening that I didn't know. So you will be hearing from me probably tonight, asking you some questions. <laughs> um, but these are the kind of things, these are the kind of things that we need. We need to hear this information because if, if I don't know it and you know it, then that helps me. If I know it and you don't, that helps you. So coming together and, you know, talking and just sharing each other's resources is, is what it's all about. And um, I hope that when you open up your, the home or the center in Gastonia, you will let us know. We whatever, we, whatever we eventually make it, it's just, 
One Piece. It's ours. Just say yeah. ours. <laughs> yes. Well, when it is ready to go, or if you need anything, please let me know so I can put it out in the universe. Um, when you, when it opens, please let me know. I would love to be there to support you in any way I can, or support all of us any way we can. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time um, to talk on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And um, you continue doing great things. And I know that I'm going to be seeing you very soon somewhere in the community doing something. Oh, you need to tell people what you also do for my family. You're going to leave that part oh. out. <laughs> and I met you through Sanjay. <laughs> OK. So. so what y'all don't know is what y'all don't know is, <laughs> because Tiffany keep a lot of things to herself, <laughs> my um, Son, stepson that's in the home with me. I also have a little daughter and an older daughter. Tiffany's organization mentors him with some great mentors. They come to get him. They take him out of town. Mm -hmm. um, just give him an outlet other than us being here and into his schoolwork and him getting into things. Tiffany had a party mm -hmm. at her house. He went to half the day. So uh, me, his mom, you know, we really appreciate that. And having a mentor, uh, uh, and, and it's a younger fella and his mother, yeah. you know, that he can relate to. Because me, I'm a challenging person. Right. You know, um, I'm, I, I know I'm challenging, very. So it's good that um, we have programs like yours that's able to connect with people and to enlist them in where they had a heart for to um, under your stewardship, do those type of things because that changes life. Those are things that people might not see; they change life. So yeah. you know, you just like Sanja in that regard. So we appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I um have I reached out to people personally that I felt would be good mentors. Um, I'm very proud of the selection of mentors that BVP has um, for our kids. Um, your son's mentors are Miss Nicole and Mr. Markel. Um, mm -hmm. I actually see Miss Nicole mm -hmm. watching right now. Um, they, the two of them, it's a mom and okay. son. Okay, hey, Nicole, Miss Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Um, it's a mom and a son that they are, have joined BVP kids to. Beautiful people, beautiful, they humble, are. very, very, I mean, down to earth people. Yes, they are. So they, they, they are, loving um being your son's mentor um i met your son he is a handsome young man um had a good time playing with my son so we're going to be getting the boys together soon which i sent you this morning um we just want to make sure that the kids know that there's others out there that support them that are invested in their future and we want to give them mentors who are doing good things who believe in stewardship and you know we just want to just let our kids know that they have the support they have the resources they have people that really care about them and so that's really important to us so thank you for bringing that up I appreciate that. Well, you got to make sure that they get into the micro grant process too, mm -hmm. because everybody who's doing those type of positive things, they have funds out for that in the city and county. Okay. The more resources we can get into the people's hands, because mm -hmm. they're paying right now a lot of times, they're paying to do these things. We got to get money, resources in their hand. That way, we can get them to do more things, to get more people involved. And we just, it don't take a lot. You get a team of 13 people on the political side, we can change this city by the next election for our community. I agree. And that's a conservative estimate. I agree. I agree. Miss Nicole said, thank you so much. It is a blessing to be a part and an honor. So she heard us. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's a beautiful person. Yeah, she is. She is. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, again, you will be hearing from me. Thank you for having me. And um, I will see you soon. We will continue to, to network and resource. And whenever you need anything, you want us to do some shout outs, just let me know and I'll be there. Well, I appreciate you. Peace to you and your audience. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Peace. You have a great night. And thank you everyone for watching. I see that we had a very good audience tonight and I'm appreciative. I hope that you take to heart um, what Roddy and I talked about tonight. Um, it's not just about me. It's not just about him. It's about us coming together as a community and putting our resources together to help people that need it. Because you never know, we might need the help someday. And we want to know that there is resources and services out there that can help us. So we want to make sure that we are able to help others. Even if you don't own a business, 
even if you work a nine to five, even if you, you know, you're the mom that stays at home, no matter what your situation, if you have the means to help your community, please think very hard about doing whatever you can to help your neighbor. You never know, your neighbor might need you. And if you're able to do it, please do so. If you wanna know some ways you can help, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Rodney McGill. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Peace. Bye.